We waited three months for football to be back, but on Tuesday night, United played their third game in seven days, this time against Brighton. Now, they might be six points off the relegation zone, but they've only lost one in their last five Premier League games, and they've won their last three top flight games against Manchester United. So it's not plain sailing, although it really should be, because this game has to be nothing but three points for United if we really are chasing that top four finish that Europa League, everything that we want to do for the rest of this season, we have to be beating teams like Brighton. Now, before I do get into my predicted start 11 for the game, I wanna say just a big thank you to everybody over the last couple of weeks, all the likes, all the comments, all the interactions on the videos, it makes a big difference. Make sure you drop a like on this video. But it helps, and it's nice to have you all back, and it's nice to be talking about football. But this game here, Brighton, look at how we played against Sheffield United. I don't think we should be seeing too much of a different 11 from that game. Eight changes for the game against Norwich, but that was the FA Cup. But for this game against Brighton, this is the 11 that I would like to see. And De Gea obviously keeps his place in goal. As I said, massively untested against Sheffield United. He kept a clean sheet, but I'm not even sure they had a shot on target. I'm sure it'll be slightly different against Brighton, although United should still be dominating possession and control of the game at the Amex Stadium. So let's see how he plays there. Now, Luke Shaw, I'm going to put him in at left back, but he's coming in for some, uh, I suppose, criticism. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer actually praised him in his pre-match press conference ahead of the Brighton game, said that he's coming in some sort of form. Shaw, he's still not that complete left back. Aaron Wan-Bissaka is far superior as a fullback on the right-hand side than Luke Shaw is on the left-hand side. When Luke Shaw's good going forward, he's bad in defence. When he's bad in defence, when he's good in defence, he's bad going forward. He seems to, in my eyes, he just can't really seem to do both at the same time in the same game. Maybe I'm being unfair on him, but he'll keep his place. Not sure what's really going on with Brandon Williams. Is he slightly injured? I don't know. But Luke Shaw will keep his place. And the real question about the whole defence is the centre back partner to Harry Maguire, who for me is has really come into he came into form before the break and he's continued it. Roy Keane slated him for that mistake he made against Spurs, but he was left horribly exposed. And Bergwijn, he exposed the weakness of Harry Maguire, which is his pace. I'm not gonna blame Maguire too much for that, but clearly he was at fault, but he was magnificent, I think, in the last couple of games. Maybe magnificent's a bit strong, but he was very, very good. And I think he'll keep his place, of course he will, but his partner is the real question. Now, Eric Bai, I love the guy when he's on form, but he's just, he's a nutcase. He really is, and you just can't, I don't think, rely on him. And I really want to, and I really want to put Bai in. But I think from a safety perspective, I think Solskjaer is going to stick with Lindelof. I think Tuan Zebe is, is, is the perfect blend of the physicality and the athleticism that Bai has, whilst having the, the more of a, maybe a, a higher football IQ that Lindelof does. I think Tuan Zebe is the perfect blend of those that can partner Maguire. But Tuan Zebe, I'm not sure if he's injured, if he's still injured but he's not been there. And I think Lindelof will come back in for this game against Brighton. And Wan-Bissaka will obviously keep his place at right back. And he's just, he's just Mr. Consistency. He really, really is. It's rarely a performance below six out of 10, but sometimes it goes up. A great assist against Sheffield United. His attacking game gets slated so much, but he keeps on. That's not natural to him. What's natural to him is one-on-one -on -one defending, and he's brilliant at that. What he's learning is how to go forward as an attacking right back. And I think he's progressed massively in that role at United already in his first season. Now, midfield, I think, for me, is an absolute certainty. And Nemanja Matic is going to be the man that sits at the base of it. He was magnificent, and he was magnificent against Sheffield United. And I think, in the, even if you look at the month or so, a month or two maybe, before the coronavirus break happened, Nemanja Matic's form was fantastic. It really was. You couldn't question him. If you play him in a defensive midfield role and you don't play him in like a proper midfield two and expect him to be a central midfielder, just let him be a defensive midfielder. That's what he does extremely well. It's what he's very good at. It's what he's very calm at. He needs to start there. Scott McTominay and Fred are going to be the two that are maybe fighting for that position or maybe Fred and Pop. But anyway, we've got options in midfield and it's going to be the one that maybe chops and changes the most this season. But Matic, certainly now, He's got to be starting there every single game for United in the Premier League, as far as I'm concerned, because his form, you can't ignore it. Now, Paul Pogba is who I want to play alongside. As you can see in the formation, it's more of a 4-3-3, a with Matic sitting slight, slightly deeper than Pogba and Fernandez just in front of them. I don't think it will be Pogba and Matic just alongside each other in a midfield too. I don't think that gets the best out of Matic, and I don't think that gets the best out of Pogba. I think Matic will sit slightly deeper and allow Pogba to go slightly further forward 
with Fernandes being the real out-and-out -out number 10, but he's got the energy, as we saw against Norwich in like the 118th minute, legging it back the whole way down the pitch. He's just seems to have an endless tank. Now, Paul Pogba, for me, has been hugely influential in the game against Spurs when he came off the bench, in the game against Sheffield United when he started, and in the game against Norwich when he came off the bench. In all different ways, he affected the game massively. And I think he should be starting every single game for United in the Premier League. In any important game from now on, Pogba starts. End of, end of the questions. And I think you all agree with that as well. Certainly from what we've seen, Pogba, he's just... There aren't many players that can affect the game better than he can. And you've got to have your best players starting. And he starts absolutely. And Fernandes may have had, a, as I said in my match review after the Norwich game, may have had his least sparkling performance against Norwich. But I think he still created more chance. He's still created five chances in that game. I'd rather have somebody that takes risks and messes up. Like Bruno Fernandes and somebody who simply passes sideways and shirks responsibility. That's my preference of what I want to see from a United player. You might disagree. But I don't think you will. And Fernandez starts in that number 10 role. And up front, for me, I think it's quite simple as well. I think Rashford starts out on the left. I think Greenwood should start out on the right. And I think Martial should start up front. Rashford, he hasn't scored since his comeback. Maybe he's not been as sharp, but he spent a few months out with a really serious, was it, stress back fracture. He's not the Rashford that we saw before that happened, but that will come back and his sharpness will continue with every game that he plays and all he needs is one goal under his belt and it can start scoring left, right and centre again. I think maybe that will come against Brighton, fingers crossed. Now Greenwood and James is the question on the right hand side and maybe that will chop and change. But for me, Greenwood is the, is the more rounded individual over James. James has got his qualities and his assets, but in terms of a player who is confident to take his man on, it's just not something that is in Dan James's game at the moment. And his ability to influence our right-hand side effectively relies on Aaron Wan-Bissaka doing overlaps. Whereas someone like Greenwood has the ability and the quality to do something himself. And I think that's why I would rather start him at the moment ahead of Dan James. And up front, Anthony Martial got his first career hat-trick against Sheffield United. Our first Premier League hat-trick in seven years. Of course he's starting. Igalo's there. He scored... Four goals in his first four starts for United. Brilliant. Brilliant from Igalo. But Igalo will not be our starting number nine. Ever, I don't think. And I think that's fair. And I think Igalo knows that. And it's, it's about understanding the places within the squad. And Igalo is a great player in certain situations. But in terms of our best number nine, it's Anthony Martial. Now, some of you may say, when can we see Mason Greenwood play through there? I don't know. But we all thought that Marcus Rashford was better through the middle and we now realise that Marcus Rashford is absolutely a left winger. That's where you're going to get the best out of Marcus Rashford. Mason Greenwood, we don't really know where he's going to play because he's played in a variety of positions for the under-18s in terms of on the wings and up front, but he's got the quality. So for me, that front three is quite set in my mind. I think that's our best front three. I think that's certainly our best midfield three. Now the question mark remains about who should partner Harry Maguire. I want it to be by, but he's just maybe just too hot-headed to be relied on as a long-term centre-back for United. Let me know what you think about that predicted starting eleven for the game against Brighton. Now, I think I've got 9 out of 11 right in both the last two that I've done. Let's see if I can get 11 out of 11. That would be great. But who would be in your starting eleven? Would Matic get in there or should it be McTominay or Fred? Who partners Harry Maguire? Who starts on the right wing? I'd say they are the main questions surrounding this starting eleven for United. The rest, for me, seem pretty set. But let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already to United People's TV. And as I said at the start of the video, thank you very much for getting involved. Thank you for liking, commenting. It means a lot. So make sure you keep that up and hopefully we can continue with another three points in the Premier League against Brighton on Tuesday.